Now let's look at another example of our QE model. MyLaw.com is a recent startup trying to cater to customers in search of legal services who are intimidated by the idea of talking to a lawyer or simply too lazy to enter a law office. Unlike traditional law firms, MyLaw.com allows for extensive interaction between lawyers and their customers via telephone and the internet. This process is used in the upfront part of the customer interaction, largely consisting of answering some basic customer questions prior to entering a formal relationship. In order to allow customers to interact with the firm's lawyers, customers are encouraged to send emails to mylawyer at mylaw.com. From there, the incoming emails are distributed to the lawyer who is currently on call. Given the broad skills of the lawyers, each lawyer can respond to each incoming request. Emails arrive from 8 o'clock in the morning to 6 o'clock in the afternoon at a rate of 10 emails per hour. Coefficient of variation for arrival is 1. At each moment in time, there is exactly one lawyer on call, that is, sitting at his or her desk waiting for incoming emails. It takes the lawyer on average five minutes to write the response email. The standard deviation of this is four minutes. And we would like to answer the following questions. A. What is the average time a customer has to wait for the response to his or her email, ignoring any transmission time. Note, this includes the time it takes the lawyer to start writing the email and the actual waiting time. B. How many emails will a lawyer have received at the end of a 10-hour day? C. When not responding to emails, the lawyer on call is encouraged to actively pursue cases that potentially could lead to large settlements. How much time on a 10-hour day can a MyLaw.com lawyer dedicate to this activity? Assume the lawyer can instantly switch between emails and work on a settlement. To increase the responsiveness of the firm, the board of MyLaw.com proposes a new operating policy. Under the new policy, the response would be highly standardized, reducing the standard deviation for writing the response email to 0.5 minutes. The average waiting time will remain unchanged. B. How would the amount of time a lawyer can dedicate to the search for large settlement cases change with this new operating policy? A. E. How would the average time a customer has to wait for the response to his or her email chain? Note once again, this includes the time until the lawyer starts writing the email and the actual waiting time. Now let's switch to my Excel spreadsheet. First, let's collect information. First. The number of servers is 1 because in this case the server is the lawyer. At any given time there's one lawyer on call, so m is equal to 1. And we know the arrival rate, which says we receive 10 emails per hour on average. And based on the arrival rate lambda, we can find the inter arrival time, and we're going to convert that into minutes. So it's going to be 60 minutes per hour divided by 10 emails per hour. So the inter arrival time A is 6 minutes on average. The processing time is the time a lawyer takes to write a response email, which is 5 minutes. So the service rate would be 60 minutes per hour divided by 5. And we have 12 emails per hour. 
the process capacity in this case is equal to the service rate because there's only one server. And what else? CVA is already given, which is one, and sigma p standard deviation of processing time is four minutes. As a result, CVP will be equal to sigma p divided by p, which is 0.8. Now let's look at the uh, process utilization. It's equal to flow rate divided by capacity. And the utilization is 0.83. That is to say, the server or the lawyer is busy 83.3% of the time. Once again, I'm going to compute all those key values in our Q model first, and then we can answer those five questions. First, let's look at PQ, and that's where we're going to apply that long formula provided in our lecture. At the same time, I have already created a formula, so here I'm just going to copy and paste. And the average waiting time turns out to be 20.5 minutes. To get the total time, it's simple. It's just the sum of PQ and processing time P, which turns out to be 25.5 minutes. Next, IQ. The average number of customers waiting in line, in our case, that is the average number of emails waiting to be replied. IQ is equal to PQ times the arrival rate lambda. Be careful though, our TQ is in minutes and the arrival rate is 10 emails per hour. So we're going to convert that into emails per minute. And we get the number of emails waiting to be replied is 3.4. Next, let's look at IP. The average number of emails being responded, or the number of busy server, is going to be equal to number of server and power utilization, which is 0.83. The total number of customers or the total number of emails in our system is going to be IQ plus IP, which is 4.25 email. Okay, let's look at some of those questions. Question A, what is the average time a customer has to wait for the response to his or her email? Well. This is essentially the uh, capital T because it includes the waiting time and the time that a lawyer is writing his or her response. So it's going to be nothing but our T, 25.5 minutes. Second, number of emails per day. And we know the arrival rate is 10 emails per hour. And my law operates 10 hours per day. So the company receives on average 100 emails per day. Next, let's look at question C. Essentially, question C is asking for how much idle time a lawyer has. And we know that server or lawyer is busy 83% of the time, that is to say he or she is idle 1 minus 83% or 16.7% of the time. And he or she, the lawyer works 10 hours a day and we get the lawyer's idle time to be 1.67 hours or 1 hour 40 minutes. 
in question D, we need to look into the new operating policy. Under this new policy, everything is the same except one thing. The standard deviation of processing time goes down to 0.5 minutes thanks to the uh, new operating policy. And based on this, we are going to recalculate all those values. The easier way to do that will simply copy and paste formula and we should be okay. As we can see over here, the key difference this new policy makes is in the CVP coefficient of variation in processing time. It was 0.8, but right now it's only 0.1. And CVP has nothing to do with the utilization. Utilization remains to be 83.3%. Next, let's look at other key values. What do we find? Thanks to smaller CVP, the average waiting time dropped quite a bit. It goes down from 20.5 minutes to 12.625 minutes. As a result, total time a customer or email stays in the system is only 17.625 minutes. And the average number of emails waiting to be replied is 2.1, and the average number of emails being replied is still 0.83. As a result, the total number of emails staying in a system either waiting to be replied or being replied is 2.9375. Similarly, we can find answer to question A, B, and C based on the new policy. Well, what do we see? Idle time remains to be the same because the utilization does not change. If you look at the formula for utilization, it has nothing to do with the uh, variability. It remains to be, in this case, 1 hour and 40 minutes. What about the T under new policy? Well, we got a much smaller T. Under new policy, it takes about 17.625 minutes from the point of time the customer sent an email to the point of time he or she received the response. 